afternoon, lovely people of YouTube. Welcome back to Maverick Baking, and welcome back to another chocolate review. Today, we are going to be tasting, reviewing, and discussing a brand that I am very, very excited about. We're going to be talking about Divine. One of the reasons I'm so very excited about Divine, and one of the reasons that you should also be excited about Divine, is their ethics. Ethical farming and the ethical treatment of farmers in chocolate production is something that still isn't discussed enough. Much like in the fashion industry and in many other kind of industries that are mostly undertaken out with the countries that consume the actual product, the standards are very, very unacceptable to say the least. Divine are a company that are making a big stand in reversing this trend. 44% of the shares in Divine is actually held by a workers' cooperative of farmers who actually farm the product in Ghana, which means that working conditions are far superior to other mainstream chocolate brands, looking at you, Mars and Cadbury. And they're a brand that allow consumers like ourselves to not only educate ourselves on the ethics, but actually do better just by eating chocolate. And that to me can only be a good thing. <laughs> so the three flavors I have in my hands and very soon in my mouth for you lovely people today, I picked up in my local co-op store between one and two pounds cost wise, which is pretty good considering the high ethics of the brand we're talking about today. We have a milk chocolate with toffee and sea salt. We have a dark chocolate with gin and tonic and a dark chocolate with raspberry. So three pretty diverse flavors and three that aren't super common in other mainstream chocolate brands. So I'm very excited to taste these for you guys today. So let's stop talking, okay? <laughs> I think I'm going to start off by tasting this gin and tonic chocolate. The first thing I have to say about these bars is I utterly adore the packaging. I think it's eye-catching, but I still think it's classy. I think it's elegant. There's a difference in the textures. You can see that while we have a kind of matte black and green or black and various other colors going on there, we have that gorgeous kind of gold foil in the divine part. And I know this isn't really something to get kind of caught up on, but as I've said many times before, effort in the appearance of an actual chocolate bar itself, and especially effort that goes into the appearance of a wrapper can make such a big difference. It's the same difference that putting on some makeup and a bra can make in simple terms. <laughs> so this bar starts off with some pretty promising ingredients, cocoa mass, sugar, cocoa butter, does have some emulsifiers in there, not always a bad thing, followed by lemon oil and juniper berry oil. Now this is obviously, I believe, what's going to give it that gin and tonic flavor. So let's just see if it can do that. So we open up and these bars already are making me very happy because they have provided me with something I absolutely adore in a chocolate bar. Obviously not essential, but just a personal thing. It's got gold foil. Any chocolate bar that is wrapped in gold foil, even if it's super, super cheap, will always make me a little bit happy. It's that little kind of Charlie Bucket in Willy Wonka finding the golden ticket vibe from it. I think it's classic, but I think it's really, really sexy. The smell is gin. <laughs> As someone who drank at least five gin and tonics last night, I feel qualified to, to talk about this subject. <laughs> you immediately get that juniper smell. The cocoa is kind of secondary to that, so I'll be interesting to see how that translates in the actual chocolate. We have a nice snap, not the kind of strongest, but definitely good, and we have a relatively good shine to this chocolate. I do like that all of the little squares either have a logo or a different kind of image on it. We love the effort. Anyway, let's taste this gin and tonic dark chocolate. Wow. Call your gin lover friends. Call your mum. Call your cool auntie. Call your grandma. Call them all because this is the most gin and tonic tasting gin and tonic product I have ever gin and tonic. Fantastic balance of flavors in there. The first thing you do taste is the lemon oil. It doesn't kind of assault you the same way that the orange flavoring in a chocolate orange would, but there's this just sort of freshness and a bit of citrusiness that kind of hovers over the whole thing. Then you taste the juniper. And while it obviously doesn't have that lovely comforting burn that actual gin does, because I don't think there's any real alcohol content in here, you do get that lovely sort of sophisticated juniper flavor. The chocolate kind of comes after that. 
And even though this chocolate doesn't have a high sugar content, it's very well balanced. It's nothing too bitter. You can tell there's a little bit of vanilla flavoring in there. You can tell there is some sugar content in there, but it's nothing that takes away from the actual cocoa-ness. You can tell that a few squares of this and you would be satisfied. But at the same time, it doesn't make your throat kind of go, huh, that cheap dark chocolate can do, you know, with that horrid, acrid bitterness that you would get from cheap dark chocolate or cheap coffee, anything like that. Pretty well balanced. While I will say it's not necessarily the first flavor I would be excited about in chocolate, you know, it's not necessarily a flavor I would want when eating rather than when I'm drinking myself stupid, this is a very well executed gin and tonic flavored product because I've had some that are just, we're not gonna talk about that. <laughs> Overall, this bar has a good texture, it has a good flavor and it does exactly what it says it's gonna be. So I'm going to give that a solid four out of five. Let us move on to the next dark chocolate in today's little collection, which is the dark chocolate with raspberries. So this might be a little bit more familiar to everyone. This, again, similar ingredients, but obviously instead of the lemon and the juniper, we have freeze-dried raspberry granules and a little bit of natural raspberry flavor. So that suggests to me we're going to have both taste and texture from raspberry in here. Never a bad thing. So here we are again with the sexy gold foil. Let's just, let's get her naked. Wow, immediate fruity smell when opening this. Again, overpowering the chocolate, but not necessarily in a bad way. We can already see, again, that we have those lovely kind of images and logos on the actual chunks. And on the back of the bar, you might just be able to see those chunks of raspberry bits just peeking through, just to check out what you're doing. Again, a good snap, especially for a chocolate that has bits in it, which can usually be harder to achieve. Now this, this is a sexy sight, folks. Let's just get a little close up. I really hope the camera picks these up, that you can see all those gorgeous reddish pink raspberry bits, just, just kind of making themselves known in this bar, you know? Let's see if that strong kind of fruity smell is executed in the flavor. Mmm. That is how you do a raspberry chocolate bar. Intense raspberry flavor. I don't know if that comes just from the freeze dried pieces or if it comes from that flavoring as well. Nothing artificial, nothing that tastes like a kid's yogurt in here. That just tastes like dried raspberries in a delicious way. You have that kind of sweetness, but you also have that lovely acidity that comes with it that pairs really, really well with the strong chocolate around it. Mm. Adds a great little bit of crunch in there too. That is seriously good. If you love raspberries, if you love chocolate, an absolute winner. The main flavor you get initially on tasting it is the raspberry, but that lovely, warm, comforting cocoa does definitely come afterwards and lingers. So if you want to taste that cocoa, this is a bar for you. Gorgeous melt, lovely and creamy. Again, cocoa is strong enough to satisfy you with just a few squares. You don't need to eat the whole bar, even if you want to. <laughs> really, really good stuff. Again, for a bar that doesn't have a large sugar content in there, it's impressively well balanced, which we love because this is how you start to enjoy dark chocolate. If you're someone who doesn't like dark chocolate because it's too bitter, it's too strong, bars like this that actually put effort into making strong cocoa enjoyable, love it. This does exactly as it's supposed to. Great taste, great texture. It's a five out of five for me. Absolutely. I am having a great day. We love this. We love positive reviews. We don't get to do them that often. <laughs> the third and final bar we're going to be tasting in today's Divine Chocolate Review is their smooth milk chocolate with toffee and sea salt. Now this is one for all you milk chocolate lovers to get excited about. It's a 38% cocoa, which is nothing too high, but it is still kind of higher than your regular chocolate bars would be. Your Cadbury, your Galaxy, your Hershey's, well, not so much Hershey's, I don't even know if it really counts as chocolate, but your Cadbury, your Galaxy, your mainstream milk chocolate bars tend to be between 25 and 30% cocoa, with the majority of the rest being made up with sugar. So this one being 38 gives you that little kind of extra bit of cocoa flavor without it being too intrusive if you're not into the dark stuff. Also very nice to see that this milk chocolate 
chocolate contains absolutely no palm oil because that can be a serious downfall for big chocolate brands, especially nowadays. So looking at the ingredients, the main ingredient is sugar, followed by cocoa butter, skimmed milk powder, cocoa mass, some butterscotch, which I'm guessing is going to give that toffee flavor, and some lovely sea salt in there too. So let's get this open and see if it's any good. So let's get this one open. So straight away, we have those lovely kind of images and logos on the front again, just to make it a bit more exciting for the eye. We can't really see any hints of that toffee or that sea salt in the back in the, any kind of texture difference, but you can smell that kind of burnt sugar in there straight away. Yum. Snap-wise with this chocolate, nowhere near as strong as the dark. That's kind of to be expected, though I would always prefer a bit of a better snap. The texture looks like it's going to be kind of nice and smooth. You might be able to see if my camera decides to play well today. You might be able to see there's a little kind of chunk of that toffee in there just teasing us. So let's bite in and see if this milk chocolate with toffee and sea salt is worth your money. Mmm. Oh wow. So obviously with it being milk chocolate, it's sweet. It's undeniably sweet and considerably sweeter than the dark bars. So if you are into sweet treats when you eat your chocolate, this might be one for you. The toffee, thankfully, is very natural in its flavor. Often when you buy kind of caramel or toffee bars, you'll have this synthetic toffee flavoring in there, which just overpowers everything else. This, the only toffee flavor you get is when you bite into those lovely crunchy pieces of actual butterscotch chips. There is a wonderful creaminess to this bar. Divine have used a considerable amount of cocoa butter and milk fat in here, which makes this a gorgeously smooth, melting, creamy and addictive milk chocolate. The salt balances out that sweetness and stops it from becoming far too rich. I think I could smash this whole bar. I won't lie. <laughs> that is seriously good. The toffee flavour, as I said, isn't too overwhelming. The cocoa is obviously secondary because it's a milk chocolate, though it obviously does still have some flavour in there more so than your mainstream chocolate brands because of the higher percentage. That is some nice chocolate. So I would give this, for what it advertises itself as, for the balance of flavours and the enjoyability, it's a solid five out of five for me, no doubt. Very, very happy with that. Overall, I'm very pleased and I'm very happy to say that Divine is a brand I would seriously recommend you dropping a few pennies on next time you're in the shop for some chocolate. If you guys have ever tasted Divine chocolate, do let me know in the comments. Let me know what you thought of it or let me know if you've ever seen any of their flavours but just never really gotten around to trying it. I'd love to know. If you guys enjoyed today's video, don't forget to drop a big chocolatey thumbs up and to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already because it would be lovely to see you again. In the meantime, that is all I have time for today, guys. I'm about to go and get myself a cup of tea and enjoy this chocolate even further. I really, really appreciate you being here. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you for the next one.